Well, hello, church. It is so great to have you um, join us on our online service from wherever you may be watching, both close and also afar. I want to welcome you. It's so great that you can be with us today. My name is Joe. I'm part of the team at Centerpoint Church, and we're excited for what God is going to do during our service today. We're actually going to come around our time of giving. You know, one of the things I love um, uh, about Centerpoint Church, we, we, we believe in generosity. We, we believe in the principle of giving. And it's, you know, it, it, it's never about the money. It's never about uh, uh, just the finance. It's actually about um, us aligning our hearts with what the Word of God says about giving. And so today, as we give, I want you to, to really just uh, treat it as an act of worship. You know, to, to um, we've worshipped today and our, our team led us some worship, which was fantastic. But one of the, the key changes that I had in my heart when I really got the revelation of giving was when I actually went from just giving my money to actually treating it as a time of worship. So as we give today, the giving um, information is on your screen so you can actually give um, uh, in different ways, direct debit. Um, but I just want to uh, pray a blessing over you today and pray that as you give and as we worship in our giving, that God's heart will really connect with yours. So Father, we just pray a blessing upon each person that gives today. Father, we just pray you would be their provider, you would be their Lord. And as Father, as we worship you in our giving, I pray that heaven would open and open heaven would be upon each person watching today. You would bless them, you would provide and you would guide them in every way. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, one of the uh, really exciting things that we do as a church at Centrepoint is uh, every year we, we, we have our miracle offering. And it's actually an exciting time where as a church, we actually look uh, um, uh, beyond the walls of the church and beyond of what we're actually doing. And we, uh, for those that maybe have never uh, been part of a miracle offering or heard of a miracle offering, basically we come together and we believe in the giving of, of our finances to different projects. And in just a moment, um, uh, we're, we're going to show you a video of our 2020 projects. But just let me encourage you when it comes uh, to miracle offering, um, you know, the, the, the key word there is miracle. You know, we have seen over the years so many miracles that have come to pass uh, through our giving, through the generous giving through Centerpoint Church's Miracle Offering 2020. So just before we, we, we move on with, with today's service, I actually wanna, uh, want you to actually watch the video, which actually explains uh, the Miracle um, Offering 2020 project. It, it, it's an exciting time as a church, as a leadership. We're excited with what God is going to do uh, in us and through us. So watch this video and then we'll be back in just a short time just to explain a little bit more about Miracle Offering. Hi Church, if there's one thing this season has truly highlighted to me is that we are so blessed living in Australia and in particular the beautiful city of Perth. For many of us, life is beginning to return to a new norm. I am so grateful for what God has done in our midst, but we must not forget, for many, they have not been as fortunate. In Genesis 22, 17 to 18, the Lord speaks to Abraham and makes him this promise. I will bless you and make your descendants so numerous as the stars in the sky and in the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And he ends this promise with a powerful declaration. Through your offspring, the nations will be blessed. The Lord's blessing was not only to Abraham, but through Abraham. In the same way, I believe that God has blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. I would like to invite you to join us as we make a difference in Miracle Offering 2020. Our first Miracle Offering project is to bless the poor. Our friends at Compassion and Impart tell us that many in poverty-stricken nations are seeing their families starved to death due to the COVID-19 lockdowns. They have been left to fend for themselves without any support. The situation is dire and only getting worse. But we can make a difference. By working with Compassion and Empire, we can work through the local churches to reach the people in these nations. We have an opportunity to feed the poor, to clothe the naked, to heal the sick, and do good to the least of these. We have also heard reports that in nations that have previously been close to the gospel, the government is actually turning to the church for help. That this could be the church's greatest hour, and we want to play a part in seeing the gospel reach the nations. 
Our second project this year is to bless the generations. Last year, church, you were so generous in giving to our Bibra Lake upgrade. Through that renovation, we were able to complete a brand new creche facility as well as refurbish our toilets and our kitchen. On top of that, we were able to reduce the loan on our building facilities. This way, we can work towards handing over a great inheritance to the next generation. Here we are in our newly refurbished Maddington Hub. Thanks to your generosity last year, we were able to build new kids' rooms upstairs, create a brand new foyer, and expand our auditorium to fit 300 people. Not only that, but we were able to purchase the land next door, giving us 4,000 square meters right in the heart of Maddington, serving our community and the generations for years to come. In 2020, we want to continue to reduce the loans on our building facilities, as well as set aside funds for our Byford future home. We believe that when we are good stewards of the resources that God has placed in our hands, we can really set up the generations to come. Our third miracle offering project is to bless the unreached. Over the last three months, our church has quickly transitioned to online services. The moment we did this, we saw a massive increase in our reach. Centerpoint Church has truly become an international church where we have seen family members join us from across the globe. For this reason, we are so excited to launch our permanent online campus so that people around the nation and around the globe can remain a part of the Centerpoint family even after we relaunch our three physical locations. A portion of this year's miracle offering will go towards purchasing equipment needed to expand this new online campus. As always, Church, we would love you to prayerfully consider how you can be a part of Miracle Offering 2020. Please make sure that you give within your means. And the good news is, is that this year, all giving is 100% tax deductible. I love the fact that we can come together in a global crisis and look beyond ourselves to bless the nations. We love you, Church, and we can't wait to see what God does through you. Well, welcome back. Um, I'm sure you're inspired by that video. I'm not sure about you, but you know, uh, uh, um, as soon as that, that, that whole um, uh, theme of blessing the nation that just really um, excites me to it, you know, even during these times of, of you know, uh, there's a bit of uh, uh, a panic and fear in the world, that as a church, we can actually be the hands and feet of Jesus. But what we do ask you as a church is that, you know, you give within your means, you give responsibly. You know, we don't want anyone going into debt um, uh, to give. So please give within your means. And we understand that, you know, we are in times uh, where, where, where some people are really struggling financially uh, uh, due to the, uh, the issues that's going on in the world at the moment. So we understand that. But you know what? You know, it, it's between you and God. You pray. What is it that you want to give? And maybe this year you're not able to give. But we ask you to join us in prayer. Pray for the projects that you just saw and pray that, that, that God will just use this finance to do great and mighty things. So, you know, whether you can or can't give, we want you to be part of Miracle Offering 2020. It's an exciting time and I'm excited with what God is going to do. You know, um, one of the projects that you saw on that video was, you know, we, we, we want to bless the generations. And, uh, you know, today I actually want to speak um, on that very topic, on the, on, on the topic of blessing the generations. You know, it says in Psalm chapter 78, it actually says, My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We would not hide from them, from their descendants. We would tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and his wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. They, and they in turn would tell their children, then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his 
commands. You know, one of the things I love about Centerpoint Church is that uh, we are a generational church. You know, one of the things I love uh, um, uh, seeing on, on, on a Sunday morning at church, and one of the main reasons why I'm excited that we're, we're back, and, uh, um, you know, uh, even in, in, in the, for those that actually are able to attend our physical gatherings, is when you go to church on a Sunday or whenever it is that you go to church, you look around and you'll see something they actually don't see very often um, in the world, and that is the generations coming together. You know, normally within society, you know, the, the young people are uh, doing their thing and the middle-aged people are doing their thing and the, 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 the older people are doing their thing. But when it comes to church, we come together under one banner, under one name, which is the name of Jesus. And the generations um, can actually uh, be an example to the world. Because in, it, in the world, you actually don't see that very often. There's actually something powerful, even counterculture, when a person or a group of people develop meaning relationships with people from other generations. You know, I don't know about you, but I actually enjoy talking to, to, to many of the older people that I have in my life. You know, my, my grandparents are, are no longer with us, but I remember, you know, as, as a young teenager, just sitting there and hearing stories about, you know, the old times and hearing stories about past generation, the way things were and the way things used to be. You know, we don't, we don't believe that one generation is more important than the other. You know, we believe that we need to celebrate every generation. It's not about saying, you know, the young people are more important or they're more. No, no, we celebrate every generation. But as every year passes, I actually find myself, uh, you know, pretty much saying the same thing. When the year ends and, you know, you're celebrating New Year's, most people say, where has that year gone? When we celebrate a birthday, man, it seems like yesterday I was this age and now I'm this age. And, you know, time just goes by very quickly. Um, you know, uh, this year, Lisa and I have been married for 23 years. And one of the, you know, I look at that, and I think, man, 23 years. It just seems like yesterday that we had our first anniversary. And all of a sudden, time just flies by very quick. I have, you know, my, my, my twin boys, Dominic and Isaac, in just a, a month or so, not even, just a few weeks, they're actually going to turn uh, 16 years old which means L plates and driver's licenses and all that sort of th things that we got to look forward to. But you know what? It seems like yesterday that they were born. It seems like yesterday that, you know, we're at the hospital and the twins were born and their first birthday, but time goes by very quickly. And because time goes by very quickly, let me say that time is a precious thing. Time is precious. See, we only have a certain amount of time to build something that will bless, yes, the current generations, but also those to come. I believe our lives aren't just for today, but our lives are leaving an imprint for future generations to come. Now, with time going by so quickly, I believe that as a church, that we are called to leave a godly legacy behind. You know, when, when, when our time comes and when we're no longer around or when we're a bit older or when maybe we even depart this earth, I believe that we need to leave a godly legacy. And I'm going to talk about this as we go along today for the next generation to come. You see, let me ask you that question and, leave, and, and, and just I want you to think about this as I speak today is what legacy are you leaving behind? What legacy are we leaving behind for the next generation? You see, however you might frame that question, the truth is that right now you are working, we are working towards the legacy that we are leaving. You see, we don't actually have uh, um, uh, a choice whether we do or don't pass on a legacy. Whether it's a good or a bad one, we're going to leave behind something for the next generation. You know, as... Um, uh, I used to work as a school chaplain, you know, uh, um, working with teenagers every, every day. And one of the things that used to break my heart is coming across teenagers. You know, they got their whole life ahead of them. And the only thing they can think about is, well, I've got nothing to live for. Or my home life is this situation. Or that has happened. Or this has happened. And, you know, people that, young people that should be celebrating the fact they've got an awesome future ahead. But unfortunately, they didn't have a very good legacy left behind for them. Many of them had legacy of brokenness and, 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 and poverty and, and, and abuse. And unfortunately, it actually framed where they were in today's society because of the legacy that was left. And my heart is that as God's followers, as, 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 as Christians, that we prioritise leaving a legacy for the next generation. See, my heart is to, is to actually build, build God's church and see people come to a knowledge of the unconditional love of Jesus. But not just a... Uh, a, a knowledge, but actually a transforming relationship with Jesus. One of the things I love to see 
uh, more than anything, is somebody received Jesus into their heart and have their life radically changed, radically saved. But you know what? You know, uh, as much as that is great, I believe in turn, we need to be replicating that time and time again. You know, I think back to when I gave my heart to the Lord many, many years ago at a, at a, at a Youth Alive event. And I remember the speaker that was speaking there at that night was actually speaking um, about the current generation. He was giving, you know, some statistics and he was giving all that. And I, I can't remember too much of the message, but one of the points that he actually uh, said, which really uh, 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 spoke to my heart, which led me going to, uh, going to the altar and give my heart to Jesus, he said, we only get one life. And there have been many that have actually paved the way so that many can actually come to know Jesus. And he actually had a word from God. And he was saying, that there are some of you here that you have Christian parents who have paved the way, who have actually left a legacy for you to follow, who actually left a blessing for you to inherit. And I remember that was actually speaking straight to me. There were many people in that room, but I remember God just speaking to my heart saying, Joe, I did not create, at that time, I, 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 I wouldn't even call myself a Christian. I knew I was in church, I attended church, but I was far away from God. And I remember just walking forward to that altar giving my heart to Jesus and actually praying a prayer saying, God, I don't just want to inherit the, 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 the blessing of previous generations or the legacy that my uh, parents have left me, but now I want to do my part to actually leave that to future generations to come. You know, uh, I love what it says in, 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 Psalm chapter, in Psalm 145 verses 1 to 7. And it says, I will, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commands your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. You know, who are the they that David is actually writing about? He's talking about future generations having a relationship with God. Future generations that are actually going to sing of his goodness, that are going to sing of his praises. And the only way that's going to happen is if the love of God and if the, or, or, or the things that God is worthy to be praised about are actually passed on to the next generation. You see, I believe we need to leave behind both a spiritual legacy as well as a physical legacy. The spiritual legacy, actually uh, uh, leaving behind for the next generation uh, um, a, a Jesus-loving, Holy Spirit-filled church. Not a church that would talk about, you know, the good old days of how this church used to love Jesus and how this church used to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, and talk about the good. No, no, a church that is actually loving Jesus, going out there, winning the lost, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with power. That doesn't just happen. That actually happens when people realise that we are here to rise up the next generation, to bless the generations. That's why we have you know, a, a kids' church. That's why we have youth ministry in our church. Not so, not so that kids can get babysat and looked after. No, no, because they can be imparted the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Also the physical legacy that we want to leave behind. You know, we want to leave behind debt-free buildings that future generations can build the house of God on. You know, I don't just believe in, in, you know, building for the now. And, you know, we, we, we thank God for our church buildings and thank God, you know, we, you know uh, as the campus pastor at Byford, uh, my daily prayer is that uh, God provide that land or provide that building. Not for the fact of just having a building, because I actually want to leave behind for future generations a, 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 a place where they can worship, a place where they can reach the lost, a place where they can uh, uh, fulfill all that God has called them to fulfill. So it's not just about, you know, we just want a building for the sake of it. No, no, no. We actually want to leave resource for the next generation. Yes, to inherit it now, to be blessed now, to be able to, 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 to uh, reach the lost now, to reach people that we never, uh, have never reached before. Yes, for the now, but also for the next generation. That's why part of our, uh, our miracle offering is to bless the generations. We don't want to just be uh, fall into the trap of just thinking for the now just planning for the now, just uh, 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 enjoying the now. No, yes, we want to do that. We want to uh, uh, enjoy the now, but we also want to plan and we also want to actually uh, uh, establish a strong foundation for future generations. You know, uh, my dad was, uh, he was saved. Uh, he was the first one who gave his life to Jesus in our family. Uh, my dad, as a young kid, I I think I was seven or eight years old. And I remember my dad, every Sunday, he would get dressed up in his suit and he would take off somewhere. I didn't know where he was going, but 
um, later found out he was going to church. And I was thought, but don't we already go to church sometimes? You know, the church that we used to go to and we used to be, uh, attend a Catholic church. I was in Catholic school at the time. But my dad actually had a powerful testimony how God, you know, saved him and how God changed his life and how God took him off one path that was leading uh, uh, to destruction, actually saved him and gave him an eternal inheritance. And, you know, my dad would go to church and I mean, I've got four older sisters and my mum was quite anti-church, so she would never let the kids go and say, no, the kids aren't going, they're not going to be changing, so-called changing religion. But, uh, you know, as time went by, I remember my dad started to take us to church and he took us to... to um, to Sunday school, and then eventually my mum gave her heart to God, and as a family, we would, we would attend church, and I remember I'd go to kids' church, uh, Sunday school, as it was known back then, and that's actually where my journey with God began. That's where I was introduced to the Bible, and I was introduced uh, to the Holy Spirit, and I was introduced uh, uh, to the destiny that God had given me. You know what? I thank God for a dad that introduced me to Jesus and his church. Yeah, and that journey has had its ups and downs. That journey has had its, uh, you know, good times and not so good times. But I thank God that, that, that someone in my family gave their heart to Jesus. But not just gave their heart, but then my dad made it his priority. To, hey, I, want, I don't want to just enjoy this. He was going on his own for a while. But he knew God has not called me just to enjoy this and to, be, to, to have a relationship with Jesus on my own. I want to leave that legacy for my family. Now, Weg, I'm a Christian and I'm serving God. And you know, uh, my, my, my kids are loving God and my sisters and their kids. And there's actually a godly inheritance that future generations are going to have. And now my uh, nieces and my nephew, they've had kids and attending church and it's all started going way back when my dad gave his heart to God. That's what it's all about. You know, I remember my dad just building the church and my dad giving finance to build the actual church building that we were at at the time and we would go there and he would be laying bricks and he would be fixing things and he would be, and I used to wonder why is he putting so much time? He knew that what he was doing at that time wasn't just for now but was for future generations to come. And now look at my dad now. And, you know, my dad's had some uh, health battles in recent times. And, you know, uh, recently, you know, a miracle occurred where we, we were told that my dad would never be able to, to, to go back home because uh, of his uh, illnesses. And, you know, through uh, a, a miracle and, and medication and all that, he's actually able to go back home. In a few weeks, he actually went back home. And I'm looking at him and, you know, now he's, he's getting old. He's a little bit frail. But I look at him and say, thank God for a man that had a generational mindset. Thank God for a man that knew what it was to actually sow into the next generation. And I love that. And I believe uh, um, that's an example for all of us. That's God's heart. He's not to just build for the now, but to build for the future. Because time comes and time goes. But I, I love the fact that blessing the generation is part of our miracle offering. Why? Because I believe that the, 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 the miracle that's going to happen won't just be seen now, won't just be seen you know, with, with, with the amount that we, that we raise and sow, but it'll be seen maybe in things that we will never physically see, but the generation will be blessed because of that. You know, Blessing the generations uh, actually requires us to have three quick things. And, you know, that is, requires us to be visionary. You've got to see it. You've got to see beyond ourselves. You know, we, we, we talk about buildings and acquiring land. You know, every time I look at a potential church building or land, I don't, I don't just see it for what it can do today. Yeah, we can help us, you know, find our own home. No, no, I, I see beyond that. Man, this can then be added to and then that can happen and then this generation can, you know, I'm thinking years down the track that people will be blessed that may, even, may not even remember who started it, but there was a generation of people who actually sowed and planted for generations to come. You've got to be visionary. You've got to be selfless. Our human nature many times makes us focus just on the now makes us focus just on the things that we've actually uh, got around us. But when we're selfless, we actually have that, that attitude and that mindset that it's not just about me. Yes, I'm going to bless my family now and I'm going to uh, um, uh, leave behind for my family that's now and I'm going to provide and I'm going to give them whether it's a physical or a spiritual legacy. But no, 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 it's actually saying I want to look beyond that. I may never fully see the blessing of what I give into, but hey, it doesn't matter why because we're not... We're actually, we're actually selfless. We're thinking about other people. And the third thing is we actually got to so be visionaries, be selfless, and actually uh, have the bigger picture mindset. Be able to picture it. Be able to just close your eyes and think, you know what? I can see me and my children in this location serving God. But you know what? I can see my grandkids and I can see their children are actually a godly legacy, both in the spiritual but also in the physical.
You know, I want to leave to my children all, sort, all, all the spiritual legacy things that I've gone through. I want to, I want to see them uh, have joy in the midst of difficulty. I want to see them, you know, uh, uh, know all about receiving and giving grace. What the Bible teaches about that, encouraging and inspiring them towards greatness in, 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 in giving of their time and their, their treasure and their, their energy for the kingdom. I want to see my children be involved in building God's church because I saw my dad do it. I'm doing it. I want the future generation to do that. I want them to have un unconditional love for God and his house and, 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 and his family, leading people to God and actually discipling and leaving a legacy of, 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 of obeying the call of God. But we have an obligation to the next generation. We have an obligation to teach so that they will always know. We have an obligation to give so that they will be resourced well into the future to do all that God has called them. And we are obliged to actually build the unity within the generation so that the blessing will flow. When you can have a teenager and a, you know, an elderly man who's at the last season of their life actually have something in common and to build, there's something powerful about that. It's called unity. And the Bible says that where there is unity, God will command the blessing. You see, each generation will reap what the previous one has sown. I believe that we, God is calling us to sow wisely. God is calling us to actually sow uh, um, uh, with a big, big mindset, with a bigger mindset, a bigger uh, a vision to, to actually sow selflessly as well. You see, the destiny of future generations depends on our action today. What we do today actually affects them in the future. You know, um, one of the things I love about, about church is that, you know, and I, I love church history. You know, I remember going to Bible college and learning about church history, but I also love, you know, there are churches even here in Perth that have been going for years and years, and you, you hear about, you know, the challenges that they face, and you feel about, you actually hear about some of the things that, that happen, but the church just keeps going. And there's generational changes and churches that are adapting to the changing times and changing methods. I love all that. But I love the fact that they tell the story of how, you know, even the gates of hell tried to push and tried to shut that thing down and tried to, to, to divide the church. But the church of God has prevailed only when people had an eternal mindset. Hey, this church isn't just for today. We're not just doing this to today. We're setting this thing out. We're putting a mark in the ground for this generation, but for generations to come. Let me ask you the question that I asked you earlier, and that is, what is your legacy? What legacy are you leaving behind? What legacy are we leaving behind to the next generation? As I said earlier, everyone leaves a legacy behind. Whether you plan to or not, everything we say, everything we do, leaves an imprint in the lives of those around us and those that are close to us. I want to be a person that, you know, my children, you know, my, my boys and my girl, you know, and their children, my, I want to look back and say, I thank God that Joe and, and, and Lisa and that church actually built this. I, want to, I thank God that they gave generously, I gave of their time, gave of their finance. I thank God that they were selfless, that they had vision because now we're reaping what they sowed. And then in turn, they don't just enjoy it, but then they begin to actually uh, sow for the generation to come. And that's why the Bible talks about the blessings for generation after generation. You see, as long as there is breath in your body, in your lungs, there's an opportunity to leave a rich legacy of hope. You know, start uh, um, really dreaming and saying, what is it that I can leave behind? What is it that I can do today to build the generation of today, but also the generation of tomorrow? And I believe that as, as, as God's children, He speaks to us. You know, never, never be uh, uh, shy or scared, even at church. Cross the room and speak to someone who maybe you never speak to on the street because they're older or they're not part of your generation. You don't have things in common. But it's actually something powerful when we actually get out of our comfort zone and say, you know what? I'm going to be a multi-generational person with that mindset that God's heart is for all people, to the very youngest, to the very oldest. And I want to, I want to pray today in closing two things. I want to pray that you get that eternal mindset in your heart and in your mind. You actually begin to see the bigger picture. You see that we have an opportunity to actually leave a godly imprint for future generations to come. But I also want to pray that, that God will speak to you directly, that God will actually really just impart into your heart something that, 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 that'll be life-changing, that your vision will be expanded, that your heart, you'll see things completely different. Let's pray 
today. Jesus, I thank You that You are the God of all generations. I thank You, God, that You saw the earth. You saw well into the future. Even when You sent Your your only Son to die on a cross, You did that because You can see the future generations that will be impacted by the Gospel, by the message of hope and love that came through Your Son, Jesus. Father, right now, I pray for everyone watching today that You would speak to their heart, Father, You would expand their mind. You would expand their, 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 their vision, Lord God. I pray that would, they would just have a revelation that You are the God of the generations. Father, speak to them on how they can make a difference. Speak to them about the importance of, of, of planning for the now, but also planning for the future. And we commit this to You in Jesus' Name. Amen. Amen. Just before we finish today, I want to give anyone here an opportunity. Maybe you're watching today and you've never given your heart to Jesus. Maybe you're watching today and you've uh, somehow stumbled across this stream and you've never given, you've never prayed a prayer and invited Jesus into your heart. You know, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. He saw you at the cross. Jesus was, uh, 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 had you on His mind when He died on that cross that we can be forgiven of all our sins. We can be taken uh, um, out, of the, out of darkness and into His light. And today, I want to invite you to pray a prayer with me, simply just inviting Jesus into your heart. Or maybe you, you once prayed this prayer and today you want to recommit and say, God, I just want to pray this prayer afresh so that I can actually uh, um, uh, just have that, 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 that connection with you once again. So I want you to just pray this prayer after me, wherever you are. And uh, I believe that today, Jesus is going to do something powerful in your heart. Pray, dear Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for me. I thank You that You sent Your Son to die so that I can be forgiven. I ask You today to come into my heart, be my Saviour, my God and my best friend. I give my heart to You. Give me the strength to live for You. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, uh, I want to encourage you to text the number that's on your screen right now. One of our our team, one of our uh, um, um, leaders will be in contact you and help you in a decision that you have made. But that's all we've got time for today. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week online. God bless you.